Roberto Mancini's Italy side captured the hearts of football fans worldwide. They ended up winning Euro 2020, triumphing over England at Wembley in a dramatic penalty shootout. Under Mancini's leadership, the Italian side remained undefeated from October 2018 to October 2021, setting a new record with an astonishing 37-game unbeaten streak. Here is how you can replicate Roberto Mancini's Euro 2020 tactics for the Italian side in FC24. The Italian side would look to start off games with a 4-3-3 system and shape, looking to establish a foothold in the game before morphing their formation into a more suitable 3-4-2-1. This would help the team more or less adapt to the opposition and try and stretch the play as well as looking to exploit the opposition with the vast attacking numbers that they would look to flood forward. The tactical approach of Mancini and this Italian side would be one that would often look to try and adapt to the opposition. And you often did see that on the defensive end, the structure would shift and change, whether it was a back three system shifting into a back five or two banks of four with two strikers up front looking to press and probe. The defensive style is also one of adaptation, looking to sometimes sit a bit deeper, looking to compact, looking to maybe invite the pressure from the opposition. Whereas in other times, you might see them pressing and probing and pushing higher up the field, looking to win the ball back in those advanced zones. So therefore, the best defensive style would be set to balanced. As for the other defensive settings, it should be set to a 25 with the line game to compact century, deterring the opposition from more or less stemming together offensive rhythm in those central zones, as well as the depth being set to 55. Now, this can range between, I would say, 30 and 60 if you are looking to press slightly higher up the field looking to apply a bit more pressure to the opposition. But of course, the likes of Bonucci as well as Chiellini were at the latter stages of their careers. They didn't have the recovery pace. So if they did press higher up the field, they needed to be a bit more cautious with it so that the opposition couldn't go ahead and exploit them. The offensive tactics for this Italian side would be set to having a balanced approach for the ball to play, as well as a possession-based chance creation. Quite often, Italy would look to try and dominate proceedings, look to try and set the tone of the various games that they were involved in. And I think they ranked third in the entire competition for the average possession. The builder play will be set to balance. Now, this will incorporate both the fast build-up approach as well as the slow build-up. Now, when teams look to try and press high up the field, they could look to go long with it and play into the forward line. And often, especially if they did set out in a back three system, it would often leave quite a few of the Italian players in their own half for that effective builder play to occur. So if the opposition were looking to press higher up the field, it would vastly leave them outnumbered in those more advanced zones for the team. So you can choose to go a bit longer at times, or alternatively, if the opposition aren't choosing to press higher up the field, you can look to build out very effectively from the back, having the likes of a Bonucci as well as a Chiellini get on the ball and look to play the ball further forward, either into the midfield, looking to generate that offensive platform and those good offensive rhythms that you are going to be looking to try and generate in those central zones with um, the likes of Jorginho as well as Verratti in the system looking to just to rotate the ball around those midfield zones or alternatively you can look to go a bit more longer with a Bonucci long ball into the forward line. The width of the side will be set to 75 and quite often we would see the likes of Spinazzola as well as Insigne combined very nicely down at the left hand side looking to try and alternate their attacking runs. One would look to invert, the other one would look to stay wide, and you would see them consistently looking to work the op opposition down that left-hand flank. Whereas down the right-hand side, it was more so the likes of Berardi or Chiesa looking to more or less match up in those 1v1 situations. Quite often, we would see Italy look to try and overload down the left-hand flank, and then if it was a successful movement down the left-hand side, they would either look to ping and crosses or potentially create shot opportunities from that left space. And if the opposition were switched on and they were quite capable of defending it, they would easily look to switch the play into the opposite flank, the opposite channel. And that would be either the likes of a Berardi or a Chiesa looking to go 1v1 versus the opposition. The players in the box should be set to seven, maintaining at least three to four players breaking into the box, waiting for those potential crosses or cutback situations, as well as the corners and the free kicks will be set to four. Onto the individual player roles and instructions, starting off at the front with the striker in Immobile, who will be set to maintaining a central approach, looking to be the focal points in those central areas and be a very good physical dominant player, especially if you are looking to go long or you are looking to whip in specific crosses or cutback opportunities. You want him in the box, positioning himself in the main number nine area. The attacking runs will be set to maintaining a target player approach, looking to hold up the play back into the opposition and link up very effectively with your central midfielders as well as your wider players. The interceptions will be set to normal and then finally you want him to also maintain a basic defensive support. Out to the left hand side and Insignia who will be set to stay forward as when you do see this team tuck into its more natural defensive shape and structure, 
Immobile and Insignia would often stay further forward and be a bit more of a counter-attacking um, option when you do win the ball back and progress it further forward. So Insignia will be set to stay forward as well as maintain a free roaming chance creation. This will help him quite nicely operate either in the wider flanks or alternatively in the half spaces, alternating very effectively with Spinet Zola. The support runs will be set to maintaining a balanced support as you do see the likes of Insignia. If you do go back and rewatch games or you experience it firsthand, you would often see Insignia breaking behind, yes, or alternatively looking to come a bit shorter and link the play with the other midfielders. And then finally, the interceptions would be set to aggressive as when the side would look to aggressively press and impose themselves on the opposition, it would be the likes of Insignia and Immobile pressing from the front and looking to win the ball back higher up the field. The instructions for the right winger, which could have been either Chiesa or a Berardi at that time. So you would want them to come back and hold back on the defensive end, always looking to try and help the likes of Di Lorenzo out as much as possible, looking to drop deep and have Insignia as well as Immobile with your midfielders looking to try and cover just in behind them. The chance creation will be set to stay wide. Essentially with Di Lorenzo joining up with the back three every now and then, you don't really have a lot of supports down at the wider channel. So you do require your right winger to try and hug the touchdown and make sure that he is generating those 1v1 situations whilst also looking to penetrate the back line of the opposition from that right hand side. The interceptions will be set to normal and you want him to be set to having a balanced crossing run. The role of Nico Barella in this system was yes a number eight but he could play further up the field looking to combine very effectively with the further forward players stringing together quite a few combinations between the midfield and the attack so you want him to get forward pairing that up with the stay on the edge of the box approach. Now this will help him, yes, break forward and almost act as a number 10, but not necessarily overlap and, you know, run past the strike. You don't really want him doing that, but he does tend to get in the box a fair amount, looking to get on the end of those potential cutback opportunities. The interceptions will be set to aggressive as when you see this Italian side drop back into its defensive shape. The likes of Insignia and Immobile will press from the front, but Almost the secondary wave of pressing does come from Barella, so you want him being very aggressive and engaging with the opposition. And then finally, the defensive position will be set to cover the wing, and quite often you see him operating as that number 10, but more so looking to attack the wider right space, looking to function in the half space and make sure that he's trying to overload and overwhelm it down that side. The left central midfielder was the likes of Marco Verratti, who Obviously, he's not in FC24, but we have replaced him with Cristante, and he'll be set to stay back while attacking. Now, this will help him almost generate a solid double pivot with Jorginho, having him, you know, more or less facilitate in that midfield at that deeper rate. The support on crosses will also be set to stay on the edge of the area. You don't really want him getting too far forward. You want him more or less looking to try and rotate and facilitate the pace of play. The interceptions will be set to normal, and you want him to cover the central zones as well as have that free roaming role. Ferrati was very important in the Euro 2020 run, where he would often look to play those key passes into the attackers and try and generate those offensive opportunities. The role of the number six for this Italian side, and that is the likes of Jorginho, he will be set to maintaining a cut passing lens approach for the defensive behavior, allowing him to intercept the play. And I'm pretty sure he ended off Euro 2020 with the most interceptions from the competition, which is quite impressive considering there was a prime and Golo Kante playing in the same competition. The attacking support will be set to stay back while attacking. You want him, as well as Cristante or Marco Verratti, to quite effectively join up and formulate, at times, a solid double pivot in the midfield zones, looking to rotate play and facilitate from a slightly deeper rate. The interceptions will be set to normal, and then you want him to be the deep line playmaker. Now, when we do speak about the 3-4-2-1, you will see that, that both Cristante as well as Jorginho will have this role, looking for them to drop a bit deeper in that first phase build-up, be very involved in it, and looking to more or less dictate the tempo for the Italian side. And then finally, he will be set to cover the center for the defensive positioning, looking to screen just in front of that back four and break up the play. The role of your two fullbacks in Spinazzola as well as Di Lorenzo. Now, essentially, Spinazzola was seen as the more attacking fullback of the two, and Di Lorenzo would often try and have a balanced approach, whether it was attacking or defending, and that's why he more or less suited the back three system in shape. For Spinazzola, you want him to join the attack as well as have aggressive interceptions paired up with the step-up approach. Now, because Insignia will look to press those central zones alongside the likes of Immobile, it does tend to leave the wider left channel slightly exposed. So you did expect Spinazzola or the likes of Emerson to aggressively press high and wide against the opposition wider players. Now, the run type will also be set to maintaining a mixed approach because you want to have that good interchange and variation of, of run patterns between the likes of Spinazzola and Insignia. The role of Di Lorenzo, like I said, is a very balanced one, especially with a back four system like this. 
so therefore there's no major changes or requirements for him. He was allowed to venture further forward at times, but because Spinazzola was more of the attacking fullback of the two, you would quite often see the left-hand side be dominated by the attacking player, whilst the likes of Di Lorenzo down the right-hand side would often look to stay a bit further back and look to just make sure that the right-hand side was defensively sound. The centre-backs will be set to maintaining a balanced role and set of instructions. No major changes are required for either or, but both are very good at being able to play out from the back, whether it was Donnarumma playing those short passes into them and then looking to control the first phase build-up, whether it was a short pass into the midfield or alternatively playing that longer ball into the forward line, looking to just up the tempo of the Italian side. They were quite capable of both being able to do this role. And then finally, the role of Donnarumma will be set to come for crosses. At that time, he was absolutely insane, looking to claim every single aerial ball. But at the same time, as well, Chiellini and Benucci were very good in the air themselves. So aerially, Italy were sorted. You couldn't get the best of them at all. And Donnarumma was fantastic in doing that. Now, because you are going to be playing a mid to low block at times, you don't really need him to be a sweeper keeper. And more so, Donnarumma will look to try and stay on his line and make the the 1v1 save. So you don't really need him doing too much when it comes to running outside of his box. But I will say this as well. He was very good at also being able to compose himself when under pressure and pad from the back under the aggressive pressing nature of the various teams that Italy went up against. So once Italy had discovered a rhythm in the game, they would look to try and morph into this 3-2-5 system and shape, depending on how you see it, of course. And this would help stretch the play from the opposition, as well as look to try and get the best out of the likes of a Lorenzo and Senior, or maybe even a Nico Barella higher up the field, looking, looking to attack the half spaces, looking to exploit the opposition. And quite often it would help with the build-up play, looking to try and force the opposition back and try and give the centre-backs, as well as the two deeper lying midfielders, the opportunity to at least try and generate that offensive platform. The tactical approach of the side would more or less be set to the same. There's no major changes or requirements needed. You could probably ramp up the players in the box being set to eight, but I've still set it to seven, as well as on the odd occasion, you might be able to slightly widen the attacking outlet of the side. It can range between 75 and 85, but otherwise I wouldn't make any changes to the tactical approach. There will be a few player roles and instructions that do change. Now, of course, you are deploying a back three system. De Lorenzo tucking in from that right-hand side and playing as a third centre-back. So he will be set to maintaining a balanced approach for his centre-back role. Whereas Bonucci, as well as Chiellini or Bastoni, they'll still be set to the base set of instructions. Now, essentially, as well with the builder play, we, we would often see Chiellini take the ball and venture further forward down that left-hand channel, looking to provide an extra passing option at times, or even just looking to try and overload that left-hand flank. So naturally, you can't really change that because we have set Chiesa to playing as a right midfielder but you can more naturally do this by collecting the ball with him and driving it further forward. Into the midfield now with your double pivot of Cristante as well as Jorginho. Now, of course, it was Verratti and Jorginho, and both of them will be set to maintaining the same roles and instructions. Looking for both the likes of your left and your right DM to be able to cut past and it's looking to try and deter the opposition from playing in those central zones, looking to try and break up the offensive rhythms that they might be looking to generate. The attacking support will both be set to stay back while attacking, allowing both Verratti as well as Jorginho to dictate the tempo at a slightly deeper rate because both of them as well will both be set to maintaining that deep line playmaker role. Having them drop quite deep, be very involved in the offensive builder play, especially in that first phase. So you want them dropping deep at times, looking to get on the ball and maybe spray those passes further forward. And you do tend to see them at times operating slightly higher up the field on the edge of the box, just rotating the play and looking to try and generate those offensive movements and rhythms. Now, essentially, Verratti was very key in trying to establish the offensive outlet for the side during Euro 2020. So you want the likes of Cristante slightly higher up the field at times. So he will more naturally tend to do that with the instructions and the tactics. And then finally, for both of them, you want them to both cover the central zones and try and screen just in front of that back three. As you'll see here for Jorginho, he's got the same role and instructions as well. Onto your right midfielder, who is Chiesa, and he will maintain the same instructions from when he was playing as a right wing. Obviously, just slightly deeper, helping him drop back into that more defensive shape when required. So he will be set to come back on defense, stay wide, get in behind, normal interceptions, as well as a balanced crossing run. For your left wing back as well, he will maintain the same role and instructions, but he will just be deployed as a left wing back, allowing him to get further up the field on the odd occasion. So join the attack, aggressive interceptions, a mixed run type, as well as step up. Lorenzo Insigne will be deployed as the left attacking midfielder in this role, and it will allow him to attack the central zones very effectively. There will still be a bit of an interchange between him and Spinazzola with 
who will hug the touchline and who will attack the central areas. But quite often you will see Insignia attacking the central zone. So the defensive support for him will be set to maintaining a basic defensive support. He can look to help back in the odd occasions, but at times as well, he can choose to stay further forward and be very much the offensive outlet. The support on crosses will be set to maintaining a balanced approach as well as maintaining a free roaming role for the positioning freedom, allowing him to drift in those central areas or out wide to the left flank. And then finally, the interceptions will be set to aggressive as he will still maintain the aggressive counter-pressing nature. Nico Barella will be deployed as the right attacking midfielder, looking to very much operate in that wider right space. So he will be set to come back on defense. You will often see him joining up with the likes of a Jorginho as well as a Verratti, looking to try and solidify that backline area, or sorry, the midfield area, I should say. The support on crosses will be set to maintaining a balanced role, looking for him to, on the odd occasion, break into the box, especially with it being set to seven, allowing for three to four players to be in and around the attacking zones. He will be one of those players making those runs into the box. And of course, you want him to still drift wide into that wider right space, looking to combine very effectively with Chiesa and looking to provide extra passing options from the right flank. And then finally, the interceptions will still be set to aggressive. And nothing will change for the role of Immobile. He will still be set to stay central as well as be a target player. And then finally, have a basic defensive support paired up with normal interceptions. And there we go, people. That is how I would successfully replicate Roberto Mancini's Italian tactics from Euro 2020. Of course, the tactics that got them over the line. And I must say, I really do like them. And for my rating, I'm going to give it an 8. I love the fact that you can swap and change between a 4-3-3 or a 3-4-2-1 or a 3-2-5 system. It is really nice. It can look to try and alterate your attacking outlet at times. And you can look to try and get the best of the opposition, whether that's playing with a back five system, looking to try and counterattack against him, or at times just sticking with your normal 4-3-3 system and shape and looking to dominate proceedings with the more natural shape of the side. Of course, you guys will have to let me know down below. Do you like the system? How would you maybe change and alterate a few things if you are going to go ahead and implement it into your game? Um, and let me know what you would rank and rate the system out of 10. Please, that would be appreciated from yours truly. And also, whilst you're there commenting down below, please don't forget to smash the like button. It would mean the absolute most to me. And of course, we are growing the channel and we are trying to get to 10 thousand subscribers which is an absolute mind-boggling number to to me personally um also we have a discord server so if you are interested in football and all that good stuff i know the euros is you know drawing to a close relatively soon um in the next you know two weeks or so we're down to the quarterfinals as things stand at the time of recording this video um so let me know down below as well who do you think will win the euros who is your money on and um, yeah, if you are interested, join the Discord and we can chat all about it there and then. The, the link will be down below in the description, so go ahead, click that to join up if you would like. Um, but yes, that brings the video to a close, so I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Anyways, until the next one, until the next time, which will be tomorrow, I hope you guys have a goddamn smashing day. I'm out of here.